The Turbo Mentor was conceived by Beechcraft, specifically as a trainer, one that would propel aviation forward much farther than the propeller itself. Indeed, the aircraft was a propeller model when it was created early in the 1950s, but it would soon be converted into a jet and continue its career into the 21st century. The model trained innumerable pilots and served with virtually every branch of the American military services, beginning with the Navy, then the Air Force, the Marine Corps, and the Army. Moreover, it would even prove useful for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, not to mention for various civilian roles. However, despite its long and fruitful career, the T-34C was far from perfect, as proven by a particular incident towards the end of its service life in 2014. Visionary At a time when there was no defense budget for a new trainer model, Walter Beach decided to set forth a private venture to create an economical alternative to the North American T-6 SNJ Texan. Throughout the 1940s, the U.S. Air Force and Navy, as well as the United Kingdom, used it for primary training. Thus, Beach conceived an easier-to-fly trainer for the post-war era, based on the Model 35 Bonanza. In 1948, Model 45 brought about three different design concepts, one of which included a signature Bonanza V-tail. Finally, the definitive plan emerged, and it featured a conservative layout, though with a relatively large, unswept vertical fin. The fuselage was narrower than the Bonanza's and housed a two-seater tandem cockpit inside a bubble canopy. Both the trainee and the trainer pilots had excellent visibility. Notably, Model 45 was structurally more robust than the Bonanza, able to withstand plus 10G and minus 4.5G, but both contemporary models were powered by a Continental E-185 engine of 185 horsepower. After the prototype was built, three Model A-45T aircraft followed, the last of which had a Continental E-225 engine instead, effectively getting closer to the production version. Still, it wasn't until 1953 that production started. First, Beechcraft delivered several T-34As to the U.S. Air Force, along with an export version known as Model B-45. Two years later, the company built the Navy version T-34B, incorporating several changes to meet the different requirements, namely a differential braking for steering control on the ground, additional wing dihedral, and adjustable rudder pedals. In contrast, the Air Force version had nose wheel steering and movable seats. Production of the A variant was completed in 1956, while the B versions were finished by late 1957. Moreover, several countries also developed the B-45 Mentor under license, including Canada, Japan, and Argentina. By 1959, Continental engine variants amounted to 1,904 examples. However, it was a matter of time before the piston engine trainers became obsolete, and Beechcraft knew it. Thus, they committed once again to a private venture. just for fun. Hoping to win another contract with the U.S. military, Beechcraft began the development of a jet engine derivative of its already successful Mentor in 1955. As such, the so-called most economical jet trainer in the world was born. This jet shared many components with its predecessors, but was visually different in its cockpit, which was located further forward in the fuselage and the air intakes for the jet engine in the wing roots. Also, the power plant consisted of a newer Continental J-69 jet engine. The Model 73 Jet Mentor flew for the first time in December of 1955, but both the Air Force and the Navy settled for different aircraft. Consequently, the Model 73 jet was never produced, and its only prototype is on display at the Kansas Aviation Museum. While the project was shelved, the pilots who flew the model found it swift and maneuverable, calling it, quote, the airplane I'd like most to own, just for fun. However, the piston engine version remained in service, with a total of 773 models delivered to the U.S. flying services. Furthermore, by early 1958, Beechcraft sold their first mentors for civil use to the International Training Center for Civil Aviation, or ITCCA. The Unique Aviation School was sponsored by the Mexican government and the United Nations, and they trained pilots, mechanics, air controllers, and several other aviation jobs throughout North, Central, and South America. 
Remarkably, the model would find its way into the air forces of Chile, Venezuela, Uruguay, Colombia, Peru, and several other Latin American countries. Soon, however, piston-engined aircraft became outdated. And in the early 1960s, the U.S. Air Force phased out its mentors in favor of all jet trainers. Similarly, the Navy retired its initial batch of mentors in the mid-1970s. After the failed Model 73 venture, Beechcraft stopped producing for over a decade. But roughly 15 years later, the company and the mentor found redemption in the heavier T-34C. Turbo Mentor Under the direction of the U.S. Navy, Beechcraft designed a turboprop variant employing two old T-34Bs provided by the Sea Service for conversion. The jet was powered by a Pratt & Whitney Canada PT-6A-25 engine and featured a torque limit to restrict power output and ensure consistent performance in extreme altitudes and temperature conditions, as well as long engine life. In September of 1973, the first of two re-engined YT-34Cs flew for the first time, and two years later, the production of Mentors restarted. This model had a maximum cruising speed of 246 miles per hour at 5,180 feet, reached a service ceiling above 30,000 feet, and had a range of 814 miles. The empty weight of the C model was 2,960 pounds, while its dimensions were 33 feet 4 inches wide, 28 feet 8.5 inches long, and 9 feet 7 inches high. Also, its wings covered an area of 179.6 square feet. Other than the Navy batch, the company developed an armed version, known as T-34C-1, fitted with four underwing hardpoints, while the armament system trainer had a weapon capacity of 1,200 pounds. Incidentally, the model was also suitable for forward air control and tactical strike training missions. A versatile aircraft. The new jet trainer crossed the Atlantic for the first time in 1977 and made a demonstration tour around Europe. Shortly after, the first T-34Cs were delivered to the Navy at Pensacola, Florida, and the trainers went into service as instructor familiarization units immediately. Student pilot training soon followed, and several models even ended up with the U.S. Army. Since the late 1970s, the jet has trained numerous naval aviators and flight officers, not only from the Navy, but also from the U.S. Marine Corps and U.S. Coast Guard, as well as NATO and allied nations. Likewise, the Turbo Mentor operated with NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center as a support mission aircraft, conducting photography and video data collection, as well as safety chase. The model was primarily used for chasing remotely piloted unmanned air vehicles, which actually fly slower than NASA's F-18s. Additionally, the Turbo Mentor was also used for required pilot proficiency flying. When used as a military trainer, the instructor would occupy the back seat and the student the front one. But in its mission support chase role at NASA, the back seat would accommodate a photographer or flight test engineer. On the other hand, flying clubs and civilian owners purchased many examples. Likewise, the model eventually found new markets in Africa, specifically in Gabon and Morocco, and many other nations worldwide, including Spain, Saudi Arabia, and Taiwan. However bountiful its production of over 2,300 examples was, the last Turbo Mentor was rolled off the production line in 1990. However, its career would continue well into the next century. Training Wheels Early on May 1, 2014, a Beechcraft T-34C Turbo Mentor, assigned to the Ranger Training Squadron 28, took off from Naval Air Station Corpus Christi in Texas for a routine training flight. Not long after, the trainer went down into the Gulf of Mexico. Having no ejection seats, the instructor and the student were forced to bail out and fortunately managed to leave the aircraft. Pilotless, the Turbo Mentor crashed into the sea as the crew parachuted safely into the water. Still, the men had to wait for half an hour until the Coast Guard units from the sector at Corpus Christi rescued them. Fortunately, they had been spotted by a P-3 Orion on patrol with the U.S. Customs and Border, and according to Lieutenant Bryn Olson, they were, quote, perfectly fine. In the following weeks, the MDSU recovered the wreckage. According to a Navy press release, quote, Navy sailors and divers from Mobile Diving and Salvage Unit 2 found and salvaged a downed T-34C Turbo Mentor aircraft off the coast of Texas, 
between May 14th and 27th. MDSU-2's Area Search Platoon conducted towed side-scan sonar searches 200 feet around the suspected crash site May 15th, locating the T-34C approximately two miles off the coast of Texas, 50 feet below the surface. Unlike the fortunate crew that survived in 2014, the pilots involved in another accident eight years earlier were not so lucky. As their turbomarine took off from NAS Corpus Christi in similar circumstances in January of 2006, the aircraft spun in and crashed into a backyard at Flower Bluff, near the Waldron Field Auxiliary Landing Strip. The Turbo Mentor eventually completed a career with the Navy of almost four decades, but its time finally came to an end when, in an ironic twist of fate, the more modern Beechcraft-built T-6B Texan II relieved it. Thanks for watching our video. Please let us know your thoughts in the comments below and make sure to give us a like. Also, for more military-inspired content, don't hesitate to subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels and hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned.